Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zojalix, and welcome to the Celeste Any Percent Grand Finals brought to you by Global Speedrun Association featuring TGHSR and Black Pair 420. Um, currently, right now, as I'm sure some of you guys are wondering where uh, my fellow commentator Troy is, he is eating right now and will be joining us shortly. But, um, Either way, as you can see, we're looking here. We've got we've had an amazing season so far, and looking through the bracket right now, we had uh, Black Pair upsetting the Marlin and winning in the semifinals to go, or winning in the quarterfinals to go up against Aurora Dash, sweeping Aurora Dash in the semifinals and coming into the grand finals where he is going up against the grand champ, uh, the returning champion from season one, TGHSR, who just has been dominating throughout the entire regular season and so right now black pair is sitting at quite a bit of uh, an underdog position for himself but still very impressive for him to be where he is at and we're about to get ready here with game one super super excited to see both to see both of these guys tgh looking to try and take his second uh specific league title but also this would be his third consecutive celeste title for gsa and he is Check just back. uh oh hey troy is here hey i'm here yeah and so as i was saying you know just seeing total just awesome races and it looks like we are going to be getting started here um, again, we are getting started with game one. You can see TGH giving his nod of I'm ready. And we are jumping right in with game one. Uh, super exciting for this. Again, as I've said, you know, Black Pair just coming off, barely making his way into playoffs. And now that he is in playoffs, upsetting his way into the grand finals. Just absolutely amazing to see that happen. And so, but, you know, he's going up against a tough opponent. And so he is going to be looking at a very, very big uphill climb for himself. Mm -hmm. But it will be interesting to see what happens as we go throughout this series. Yeah, I mean, both these players are very comfortable with the best of three format. I mean, as, as comfortable as you can get, pretty much. <laughs> of course, there's always going to be fatigue in it, but they've done, both of them, a fair share of the best of threes, so... Both of them were in season... Yeah, Black Pair was in season one, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so yeah, both of these players are familiar... Oh, TGH missing the reverse hyper off... Or, looks like he mis-inputted, just went straight down instead of getting the reverse hyper right away. So Black Pair is going to be taking an early lead here. Not by much, less... Like, maybe a second, if that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, both of these players were season one competitors, so both of them know how to play in a race format they know how to deal with that fatigue yeah and be able to push through it <laughs> so I don't see the fatigue being nearly as big of a factor here and it's all just gonna come down to that consistency between all of, between both of these players and I don't know if you mentioned it but black bear is riding off of a PB that he just got today so oh yeah no I did not mention that spirit so yeah that is definitely something huge being able to start off in the grand finals after coming off of a PB today. So that'll be really, really big for him. A nice motivation thing for him. Just by uh, the way, that was a 2831 that he has now. Yep. So, oh, that's a really good time. And if he's able to keep up mm -hmm. riding that train, he could very easily give TGH a good run for his money. Yeah, um, like, let's just look. I just want to look here. Just this reference. So, both of these players are... Oh, looks like TGH was able to take the lead, having just a little bit more cleaner movement. Black Bear getting hung up a little bit there as he uh, activates the Dream Blocks and heads into the Battle and Chase. So that is going to be a lead change as we start the Battle and Chase. So very good from TGH there to be able to take these opportunities where he sees them. And so now, TGH looking at a couple... Oh, Black Bear kind of hanging himself up again. So, TGH looking at about a three-second lead right now. 
as we look into coming into the last two screens of the battle and chase. Okay, everything's standard so far. Yeah, both TGH able to make it out of there pretty cleanly. Black Pair right behind him. Very good battle and chase from both runners. Still not seeing a death from either of these runners so that is really awesome to see that you can see the consistency of their muscle memory and everything just be able to come through yeah black bear's movement was a little bit like a little bit off but i think it like he did fairly well with that first part of the wake section and now looking pretty good yeah keeping up with uh keeping up with tgh pretty well yeah some nice movement there from t as he wraps up Black Pair now right behind him. TGH sitting at a 1.43 on the IL timer. A uh, three second difference between the two runners as we go into mm -hmm. uh, Celestial Resort. Excellent, excellent way to be starting out the race for both of these runners, being able to come out and just be that close to each other. And so now we get into Celestial Resort where we start getting into some of the longer and more punishing screens throughout the run and also some of the more technically difficult just being able to properly maneuver yourself around these dust bunnies oh tgh oh, messing up the demo from the lobbies okay getting a little hung up there himself after messing up the demo black pair ooh, missing that diagonal dash there kind of seeing some little like not even necessarily major mistakes but just getting themselves kind of hung up oh Whoa. TGH missing the momentum there and end up having to take a backup strat, which is gonna actually looks like Black Pair is now taking the lead just from some of these minute mo movement differences. That we've got ourselves a very nice sink as we continue to mm -hmm. move through the lobby. Yeah, this is just a sink. They're barely a lead, if anything, for Black Pair. Oh, but Black Pair getting the faster strategy there on the coin room. And that will give Black Pair the lead. Very well done from him now. This race has gone so close and we've already turned both of we, they've there's been a good chunk of lead switches here. Mm -hmm. Less than a second difference between the two runners. And even here we could see a lead swap because TGH just has some really clean, huge mess movement. I mean, they're both fairly practiced on it. it able to work oh, yeah. it fairly oh, well. Oh, TGH is bopping yeah. himself. So that's going to help. the wall downs, yeah. Gonna give Black Pair a little bit more of an edge here as we move into crates. Oh! <laughs> Flubbed a little bit on that cycle for Black Pair, giving TGH an opening, but Black Pair getting the. Man! The, the spike jump right away into the next screen. It is, yeah. This is very close. The littlest things are changing it right now. And it's, they're just going back and forth now. Both of them doing a really good job. Black Pair looking like he had a little bit cleaner movement there in books. Able to still maintain just barely a lead. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's slowly gaining right now as it seems TJ is just playing a little bit safer with some of those things. Oh, but yeah, Black Bear in the wall, out. it's fine. <laughs> Coming out, taking the risk that he needs. Is Black Bear gonna go for the demo? He does not, so TGH is going to opt for the demo, saving like fractions of a second. <laughs> Barely any time. Oh, but TGH gets TGH the corner boost. Able to get the corner boost, and now TGH is now in the. Oh no, they're back up to sync now. Yeah. Just Look, from TGH cycle getting that important. corner boost. Okay, cycle was the same, but TGH getting the corner boost there. Allowing him to get to the bubble uh, faster. Oh man, these guys are playing this really well. TGH now with barely, barely a lead. Yeah. As we move into elevator shaft, this race is back and forth between the two runners. Black Bear is definitely showing his worth right now that he definitely has a chance to do something with this. All right, so this, we're now getting into a section now where there could be a pretty decent opening for either of these runners as we move in to the huge mess, uh, not huge mess, demo dash. Yep, the OG. Uh, this is all right, both runners opting for the checkpoint. TGH is in there, and so is Black Pair. Nobody is going to be gaining or oh! losing any time, but Black Pair messes up going for the task skip. Uh, the task cycle ends up missing the corner boost and taking a death. That's going to give TGH a couple seconds of an opening here as we move into our Shiro. Yeah, that was really close. TGH didn't even get the corner boost, but Black Pair did, and it, I think he just like didn't react in time to that corner boost. So 
it resulted in the death. I think he was just a little bit too low as well. I'm not as familiar with the actual like movement in the room. I just know you get the corner boost and then keep going. <laughs> All right, GGH, GGH doing now some up. really good cycles right now. Yeah. GGH playing it really well throughout this Oshiro. Black Bear having a little bit of a mess up early on, but seems to still be able to just make these cycles work. Kind of getting hung up on the wall a little bit there, giving. But again, these, this race is still very much back and forth. And despite the one death, that being the first death of the race, there's still a pretty decent potential for this race to turn around. Yeah. Only looking at a looking at a seven both, second league for lead. Both for of them getting four one X's. Black Bear able to come out with a 4-1-X is incredible for him. Very well done. And so now we move into Golden Ridge. You know, both of these runners... TGH looking at only a 7 second lead here. We're going into Ridge, so... Definitely something where there is a potential for ground to be made up for Black Bear. Especially in such a technically difficult stage as Ridge, and even looking at Teach, he's been focusing so much on Link's Awakening right now, and Black Pear just came off of of a, of a PB, so... I mean, TGH, TGH did a did a farewell uh, Golden Berry run last night. Right, but that has nothing to do with any percent, so that really won't be too much of a benefit in terms of routing. And but muscle he's memory for any game. percent. And he, I'm sure he always does at least one run through of any percent before he goes into this. TGH on the box list. Gets it and first he's try. Got it. Nice job from TGH. Black Pair not going for the box list strap. Very respectable play. I don't think Black Pair's gone for it at all, so. I mean, it's a very difficult trick. Effectively sub pixel, because, you know, you're just based. You have to jump based off of momentum. So it's physics based, not pixel based, which is what subpixel means. Oh, TGH missing that skip up to the okay. third block. Good yes. bubble skip from Black Pair, trying to get get over there. TGH now Let's in see. the second auto scroller. Black Pair able to get the jump over onto that where TGH messed up, so that will benefit him. TGH getting the ultra strat. Now Black Pair is coming up on his attempt at it as well. Mm -hmm. TGH only a couple screens away from Cliff Face. Black Pair is able Ooh. to get the Ultra Strat. TGH messed up the cycle a little bit with the wind. TGH now entering Cliff Face. Black Pair on the wind cycles. Playing that very well done now as he enters Cliff Face right on TGH's heels. Only a couple screens behind. Yeah. TGH continuing. Both of these runners continuing to move through cliff face again a death here will prove to be Ooh. oh no and black pear is the one to take the death unfortunately it right into the snowball getting oh. okay going to the third spring though oh and TGH, oh, TGH. he cuts tries to cut it a little bit fancy you can see the little knot yeah Actually, that was halfway through that screen death. too that being one of the bigger deaths but still comes out with a 239 Black Pair now right on TGH's heels. He will be coming out with a 2 for one So again, going into Mirror Temple now, these runners are still very, very close. Yeah, I think it's about maybe a 10 second lead for TGH. Yeah, and so right now, Especially as we go into 5B and, and a lot of the shenanigans oh. that happen with 5B, we could be looking at a potential lead swap depending on how something like Bub, uh, depending on how Bub's drop goes. Yeah, and, the, or, and I have talked about before, there is no consistent way to do Bub's drop. It can fail for any one person. It can. Bub's drop is yeah, it, it's the just, most just because of trick. It's just because of how small of a window it is. DH getting the depth's corner boost there.
Black Pear. Oh, Black only Pear's getting about boost. half the yeet. He wasn't able to get the corner boost off, so they mm -hmm. is going to lose a little bit of time there over TGH. TGH now looking like he's going to be getting a 103 on the cassette grab. Wow. Very well done from TGH. Now, Black Pear going to be behind him oh. on a 107 on the cassette grab. Ends up overshooting it a little bit, so he ends up losing a fraction of time there. TGH yeah. now beginning his 5B. Coming up only a couple screens away from his first attempt at Bub's drop. Black Pair again a couple screens behind him. TGH now coming up onto his first attempt at Bub's drop. He's gonna line this up. He's looking at it. Only a two frame window and he's got it on his first try. Basically a two so, frame window. Now eyes Easy are- to explain it is two frame window. <laughs> And now eyes are on Black Pears. He comes up to his first attempt at Bub's drop. And he's got Good. it on his first try well as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a race here okay. as we continue through 5B. Yeah, and 5B does not get any easier from here. No, it definitely does not get any easier. As we know, like just the Theo section, every single part of 5B from here on out only gets harder. But both of these runners able to get the first attempt at Bub's drop as they make their way through. As they make their way through 5B, this definitely opens it up for this to be a lot closer of a race. Oh no, but Black Pear going right into the buzzsaw. He ends up taking a death on one of the more punishing areas. Yeah, very no, cycle not the buzzsaw. He hit the spikes. Still a very cycle dependent area. DJ took a death on his first seeker room towards the start, so it's fine and not nearly as punishing as what Black Bear just got. Right, oh, Black Bear the... dying oh, at the no. end of the vertical screen. Oh no, that is one of the most. That is such a punishing death. Oh no, and he dies again. He is not able to. He gets to the last section. All he needs to do is just go a little bit more to the left. But unfortunately, he ends up taking two deaths there. That gives TGH now a huge opening as he's making his way, as he's finishing up the secret gauntlet, making it look like it's not even hard. I mean, he did have to improvise a little bit there, but was still able to pull it through with relative ease. Black Pair now coming up, only a few screens away from Theo. As TGH is looking to wrap up. Oh no, Black Pair having to take another death. TGH is going to be wrapping up his 5B with a 224. And Sub now 14 it's... out of 5B. And oh, Black Pair taking a death at the first section of this, at the first room of Theo here. And oh no, Ooh. right at the end of the screen, the Seeker just comes Black. up and noms him right in the face. Black Pair's just like, he, he must have gotten tilted a little bit because it really, the. The accidents just keep coming and they keep piling up right now as he one death after the other and it's just it's just showing that he hasn't quite gotten his bearings back from that from those deaths earlier in the in the chapter. Yeah, definitely the nerves and the tilt are gonna be very important. Cause yes, mistakes are going to happen when you are in a situation like when you are in a race situation or a speedrun situation in general. But now He's looking at almost a minute deficit here. Yeah. Going into reflection, and this is just now the ball is in TGH's court. And reflection's a very consistent chapter for TGH, too. It is, yes. Actually, now just looking at the standard deviations, this is actually his least consistent chapter. <laughs> oh, Black Bear taking a death on his first attempt at Lake Skip. Ooh! Ooh, Black Bear taking another death. TGH himself getting a little bit hung up here. TGH, though, able to complete the Ultra Strat and go blockless, and that screen. We're 
getting into the sections of the run with a lot longer and more punishing screens that you have to deal with. And we're getting to, as crazy as already to seem, we're getting close to the end of the run. We only have two more chapters left, but Summit is so long that it takes up a third of the run. Yep. We're basically on the back half right now. Looking at the home stretch, these black pairs gonna need to clean some things up. Hope TGH makes some major mistakes before if he's going to look at taking this first game from TGH. TGH now is coming up on the dev intended skips. He's got one, he's got two. And he's got three. Very well done. Black Pair now on another death for himself. Yeah, try to get a little bit cheeky with that diagonal dash. TGH now coming up on a battle and boost. Flying his way through, hitting the hitting the beginning. His battling fight, TGH is in a really good position right now, and you can see still just the consistency of the returning champion being shown as not too many mistakes have been major from him. He's only had a couple of deaths. And those are coming in huge. The amount of deaths that separate him and Black Bear are there's quite a bit, as well as some of the deaths that Black Bear had are in some of those more punishing screens especially when you just looking at like the 5b descent when you enter the mirror that death hurts a lot and black pair died in there twice that alone is 10 to 15 seconds almost yeah and, it, and he felt it too because you could see how in his play in the rest of that chapter yeah, but his reflection, he's been cleaning up, he's cleaned that up. It seems that he was able to brush the tilt off coming out of Mirror Temple and going into reflection, because we've definitely seen significantly fewer deaths from I mean, Black Bear. He still had a couple. He still had a couple, but it definitely he was able to show that he was playing significantly better than, uh, well, not, well, he's playing better and has cleaned up the tilt a little bit from Chapter 5. And that's definitely been something that is really important for him. And oh no, Black Pair takes another death. I wasn't, didn't exactly quite see what happened there. I think he, oh, he overshot hitting Badalyn and ended up falling to his death. Now TGH is in the second round of the fight. Only a little bit left before he enters the summit. TGH only with two more screens left in his fight. Black Bear is yeah, still not really smooth white. play coming in right now. This is incredible pace for TGH. Easily gonna be sub 20 coming out of this reflection. Mm -hmm. Very, very well done from him as now he gets his level up and starts to move his way into the summit, looking for that final sprint to the end of the run and to a game one victory, which is one step closer to what TGH needs for his second, for a back-to-back -back GSA title. This is 1936 coming out of reflection that is an amazing pace to see. Black Pair now in his second round of battling. Looking to be wrapping up his fight here. Only two more screens left himself. Looking at over a minute lead for TGH. And so now Black Pair is probably thinking, you know what? I messed up my 5B, that killed me right now, but we're just gonna finish this one out strong, shake it off, and try and come back in game two, because to try and make up a minute like that, 
is going to be really, really tough. Yeah, Black Bear more than a minute behind out of chapter oh. six. TGH missing the corner boost there, takes a death, misses the coin, but is able to recover pretty well. Oh wow, and actually as we look, our timers are pretty synced up at this point. Yeah. TGH wrapping up his 500 meters while Black Pear hasn't even hit his yet. So Black Pear has been setting himself up in a really, really good position. Yeah. And TGH is in a really good position here. Being yeah. Black Pear definitely showed, uh, gave a good fight, but it just ended up being that the later chapters just couldn't be done consistently for Black Pear and he just, he just fell apart. Those later chapters come in to be a major play throughout the run, especially when you're in a racing segment where you can't just say, oh, well, my 5B went wrong. I'm just going to have to reset and try again. You don't get that opportunity in a, in a competitive setting. You have one shot to get the run that you need. And this is something that I, that I really like to highlight when it comes to TGH is he shown his competitive prowess by focusing on developing his consistency as a runner rather than focusing on his um, uh, rather than focusing on getting the best time because where yes TGH is not a perfect runner as we've just seen from him taking two deaths in one screen but he shows his consistency by he never goes for anything outlandish like there was there's opportunities for demos on that place but he doesn't go for them at all yeah he plays it safe he knows that he does the thing he doesn't take any unnecessary risks and that's one of the biggest things that i think is very important in competitive speedrunning. because whether you're ahead or not if you take too much time as i highlighted last week aurora, i feel like one of the biggest reasons aurora dash ended up getting knocked out in the semifinals was because he took so many risks that ended up just hurting him significantly and i feel like if he would have just played it a little bit safer we could have very easily have seen a difference between who was playing tgh in this in this grand finals mm -hmm. and black pair you know he's stuck with what he knew he's stuck with what he was consistent with and it worked for him, and now he's here in the Grand Finals. TGH now on the Auto Scroller Skip Skip. Yeah, and I do want to point out that this has probably been the worst chapter so far for him, uh, for TGH. Like, he's definitely had a lot more mistakes throughout the chapter than I've seen in the others, in, um, in the rest of the run. Yeah, definitely. Black Bear finishing out 1500 while TGH has a couple screens left on 2000. Only a little bit left for both of these runners in this game one. Eyes now looking on to game two. Black Bear really struggled in uh, five, in, well, just Mirror Temple in general, missing the Yeet. Uh, having a lot of struggles getting, well, not a lot of struggles getting into the mirror, but he did have one major punishing death, and then he took a couple of deaths while he was in the mirror, two of them being in the very first section of the mirror, which cost him quite a bit of time, which gave TGH the opening that he needed to be able to put himself in this position for game one. And so, putting our eyes on game two, Black Pair is going to need to clean that up and just look for, just clean up what he can, continue to just play consistent, play the consistent stuff that he knows, and just hope that he's able to push out 
a better time. Oh no, oh. TGH going a little bit high on that door skip. He's kind of smirks at so himself because because everyone at this point thinks a door skip is like a given, and TGH just laughing it off because that's what you got to do with that one. And that too is kind of a punishing mistake there because that mm -hmm. door skip is a very long screen. It's not hugely long, but it is definitely. A fairly one. A fairly <laughs> big one. It's one of the longer screens out there. One of them, yeah. So now... Say it's TGH. like an average length. Yeah. TGH now entering 3,000 meters as Black Pair is entering 2,500. Only a little bit left for TGH as he looks to be finishing up his run. Black Pair trying to do what he can to catch up. Black Pair able to get the key skip. Very well done from him. And you know, it just took some time highlighting TGH's consistency play and what he does. But I also want to highlight Black Pair. The amount of improvement that we saw from, that we've seen from him this season. His average time wasn't even sub 30, and, to, and he pulls out sub 30s in his, and I think every single playoff race. He, he's played a sub-30. He PB'd in quarters in his race against Marlin, and he played sub-30 paces for both of his runs against Aurora Dash. He's played above, he's played better than he has done average throughout the entire season. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I did want to point out that TGH is probably on, like, borderline 27 pace. It's gonna, it's gonna be really tight. Feel, yeah really close like one more death and that could very easily spell the end of the 27 oh yeah not actually not even at this point now looking at it yeah. it doesn't even look possible because he's not even on the last alley-oop yet and he still has and he's hitting the 27 mark so oh, we won't be seeing a 27 here in game one but we'll still be looking at a pretty low 28 from tgh mm -hmm. with him continuing with what it is that he's doing as he hits flag four it, it's like so iffy it, it, it is I it would don't be so difficult event. i could i could see it i could definitely see it happening but it would be Nope. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he would need some wicked flag one movement to pull out that 27, but still, yeah. TGH hitting flag one, wrapping up game one with an insane time. 2804 for TGH, 2805 from TGH to take the game one victory here. Black Pair. Honestly, right behind him. Yeah. Not too far. Uh, again, an excellent time from him. Coming off of a 28-31 PB. And now he's going to be looking at a low 29. Maybe a low to mid 29 is what I'm seeing. So, again, an excellent start for both runners as we conclude game one. And, you know, TGH definitely showed really good consistency throughout this run, throughout his race. Yeah, wants to it, practice 2500, because it definitely, definitely had some gloves in there. Uh, there was, he missed a, a trick on one screen, missed door skip. I wasn't even, like, the trick I'm talking about wasn't even door skip, it was actually this screen that he just did. All right, Black Pair now coming up. Finishing up his game one. Looking at a 29 22, 29 21 or 22 for him. A very nice time for him. Less than a minute behind his PB. And again, faster than his average time throughout the regular season. So, very, very impressive. TGH now getting door skip, double fist pumping <laughs> it in the air, <laughs> shaking Proving his head like I, 
He has a he had to prove it that it, he can do it on the first try. And his pride he is intact. <laughs> Both of these guys played very good for this first game. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at getting ourselves set up for game two. It really was just chapter five that did it for Black Pair. Chapter six also had its moments, but really I feel that once he started messing up in chapter five, he just couldn't get it back. He couldn't go back yeah. that he had in the earlier chapters. And you can see it in the just in the death counts as well. Like it's seven deaths in Mirror Temple, and then and then you got the four, five, uh, uh, four and five in Election and Summit. Yeah. Whereas before so... it's zero, zero deaths, one death. Like. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, you know, gonna be looking at Chapter Five for uh black pair as his way yeah tj ask it in the discord if <laughs> anyone else has ever if anyone else has door skip this season and i don't know i haven't kept track of it because it is such a given at this point that i don't even bother <laughs> uh we just we've never kept tabs on and we did last season but like this season now the demo dash is such like it's such an, a thing that everyone does. It just doesn't seem like something. Seem like something that you need to keep track of at this point. Everyone gets it. But apparently, we're gonna need to because uh, TDH just showed that it's still not as free of a trick as people think it is. He said he forgot to demo dash. Actually, <laughs> I think that was what was going on. And so now, you know, again, highlighting. As we go back and look over game one, TGH taking about a five minute break here before we jump into game two. Uh, Black Pear, you know, he really struggled in chapter five. He took a lot of deaths there, and that really was what ended up hurting him the most throughout his entire, entire run. And that right there gave him, like, unfortunately, that was where he lost the most time. And so he's going to need to look at cleaning that up if, if he's going to want to take game two and potentially the title. Because right now, Black Pair is now going to play off his back foot. I know that some people take usually game one a little bit more casually just because it's game one. It doesn't matter all that much. But when you look at a best of three scenario, a game one is going to be is super important because... It can prove it how safe you can play game two. And now that Black Pair is farther behind, he's going to have to either just hope and pray that Celeste, or not Celeste, wow, oh, um, that TGH makes some mistakes, or he's going to have to, um, he's going to have to take some risks to make up that extra time. Yeah, it really is going to come down to if you can pull it together and actually uh, have a, a fully, like, clean run. Yep. Just going just gonna to calm down a little bit as we are getting ready for the second race. See, As you can see, we have TGH up, up, kind of AFK right now, so... TGH equals Celeste equals confirmed. TGH equals Celeste confirmed. Sorry, TGH is not Celeste, Aaron. The chair is, though. <laughs> the chair is Celeste. Yeah. <laughs> chair oh, is yeah. the best runner of this game. Chair we all know that. Chair is the best runner. Let's shout out to, the, to TGH's chair. <laughs> the true GSA champion. And so now we 
we are getting ready for game two as TGH comes back. So we'll be setting up here for that just any minute now. Um, again, you know, just highlighting, you know, as we look into going into game two, both of these, both of these runners had mistakes. Both of these runners had some really good moments. And so now we're just going to be getting ready for this la potentially last game because if TTH plays just as well as he did in game one, he will be taking the title. Black Pair is going to need to get ready and... Yeah, it's important to note that TGH, uh, TGH's finish time for that uh, for that first race was a full 30 seconds better than anything Black Pair's pulled off. Like, ever. Yeah. So, Black Pair well, just is... Just under 30 seconds, but it's still, like... So, it's gonna take a lot of effort from Black Pair to be able to actually pull this off. I mean, it's not easy to get a run like that twice in a row, but it still definitely shows what Black Pair needs to be able to do in order to have a chance at this game, too. Yeah, definitely. And so now, as we Countdown is coming in Discord, and we are ready to get this game two started, I want to see in chat who you guys are the best... Uh, who you guys are rooting for in this match as we look at wrapping up the season here. TGH looking to wrap up his season, coming off strong throughout his entire season. Black Pair playing very well for himself as well. Uh, again, upsetting. I just love highlighting Black Pair as we look at this season because he was nobody. I, I know for sure I didn't expect him to make it this far. And... So to see him in the finals right now is absolutely impressive and it honestly shattered my expectations absolutely. for who I predicted to be the top runners. And that's one of my favorite things to happen is when you have these runners that are like, hey, we're the underdog, but you know what? This is fine. We're going to kick this competition's butt and we're going to show people that, yeah, I may not be starting out as the best runner, but I'm going to prove that I deserve my place at the top. And I believe Black Pair has done that with his races. And so now we go into Forsaken City with a nice sink. Now TGH. Oh, whoa! Oh. TGH, whoa! Missing a corner boost there. Missing the corner boost was some awesome improv there and saving mm -hmm. that. Now, giving Black Pair a little opportunity that he needs to take a slight lead going into city, or er, going through city. And, oh, the Black oh, Pair missing no. wave, wave dash there. And so now the lead is going to switch into TGH's favor. As we get into the last final screens of City. Oh no, but oh. TGH misses the jump, and so now we have another lead switch. Black Pair has taken the lead going out of City. And both players having a fairly shaky start. Like, 104s, 105s, not the worst times that we've seen, but certainly it's it's definitely a lot worse than we saw in the first run and it show maybe it's showing that we're getting some fatigue coming out the nerves coming out for T for tgh they is some definitely some factors are coming in of this of being game two being the series win right now for tgh potentially the series the season the championship now is all on the line the stakes could not be higher for either one of these runners And so, just to be in this situation, nerves are going to be huge. Yeah, and Black Bear still is in the lead. We just have a bit of a timer desync going on with TGH is about two seconds ahead. So, yeah, so Black Bear still yeah, transitioned. He figured out. Right now. Oh, oh but Black Bear with the that, death! 
Oh, my commentator's curse coming through as I mentioned Black Bear's lead and then he dies. I'm so sorry, Black Bear. I did not mean to do that to you. And then, oh no. <clears throat> not getting his dash back. It's falling, falling apart right now. The spikes. Nerves are just huge right now. Okay, Black Bear now, oh, he kind of stumbles okay. a little bit, but he's able to improv this one out. Good adaptation, but it was uh, really something that shouldn't have even needed to happen as he misses the coin. But definitely the nerves coming in from Black Bear. You can see that, and he is now even more on his back's legs than where he wants to be. TGH now wrapping up with a 322 coming out of Chapter 2. Oh, Black Pear getting himself kind of caught there on the corner. He will be... Yeah, I don't know why, back. but he d ended up doing a reverse wave dash. We're looking at almost a 20 second, just under 20 seconds for TGH going mm -hmm. into Celestial Resort. TGH is in a significantly more comfortable position than he was in game one. In game one, there the first death didn't even happen until Resort. He's he's kind of cutting that dust bunny very close. Yeah, that that is a that requires you to do a demo dash in order to get through there. Both of these runners now making their way through TGH in the lobby. As Black Pear now enters the lobby for himself. Mass Black Pear, oh no. Not exactly sure what happened there. I think he just ended up not getting his dash back and fell to his death. As TGH now has himself a pretty decent lead now as he enters crates. see what happens but TGH is just having a very clean game for himself only a couple of mess ups in uh, city so far for TGH Yeah, the most that's happened so um, after Chapter 1 is just a loss of momentum on a couple screens. Yep. Where's Black Pear? You're another death for him. Oh, and he... Man, some of these mistakes from Black Pear are just... Not normal mistakes for anybody. Mm -hmm. And he, the nerves are just coming in for Black Pear and... I'm sure even now that some there's probably some tilt going on for him as well. So Black Bear's gonna need to look at cleaning some things up for himself. He needs to shake it off. Because now TGH is entering the elevator shaft while Black Bear is entering laundry. onto his first attempt at the OG Demo Dash, and he is in and through. Excellent cycles from him there, as he is now at 325 in the Presidential Suite, getting ready to start Oshiro. As Black Bear is now through the elevator shaft, 
but still has quite a bit for himself to do b before he catches up to Teach. But now, Black Pair is in the room for the OG Demo Dash. It'll be interesting to see if Black Pair is going to opt for the checkpoint or not to try and make up some extra time. He doesn't, just decides to play it safe, very respectable, but he tries to get a faster setup and is unable to do it, takes a death, but is through there on his second attempt. Oh, he gets the corner boost, but he misses the platform and dives straight into the dust money, taking another death for himself. Yeah, and TGH gonna get out of chapter three with a 410. That is a very good resort time. Yeah. So now Black Pear getting himself caught a little bit on the corner as he makes his way through Oshiro. I think one of the biggest things that are coming forth for these runners is you're seeing the Grand Finals experience. This is TGH's third Grand Finals in a GSA event, being the winner of the tournament before the league even started. And now, being the returning champion. Oh! Black Bear just dashes straight down into the Dust Bunnies. And TJ just did have a little bit of trouble at the start of chapter four right now. Black Pair losing 23 seconds to TGH in this resort. But now definitely you can see the grand, like I think one of the biggest things that are important to highlight is just the difference in grand finals experience. Cause now when you're looking at, uh, Grand Finals experience, TGH able to get the boxless strat there. Very well done from him. But when you look at Grand Finals experience, TGH has played in these stakes before. He knows, he knows how to play when the, these kinds of stakes are on the line. He knows how to control the nerves. He knows how to just continue to keep doing what he has done in the past and it's paying off for him and this is black pair's first grand finals and so for him i'm sure that suddenly the stakes are becoming real for him and now he's gonna have to understand these stakes and shake the nerves off yeah he has to be like looking at his performance so far and just trying to figure out how he's gonna get through this because right now it is looking like it's definitely a huge lead for for tgh and something that is gonna take a, a while to make up we're so early into the run at this point that this it, it just seems so much more devastating than it would be in another area. And definitely at this point, because Celeste is a shorter run being less than a half an hour for most of these runners in the league, and now for Black Pair, you can see that, like, being a minute behind is quite... Yeah, and TJ's uh, pulling out a Pulling out another great chapter time. 10.14 into chapter 5. Very, very good time for TTH as he starts out chapter 5. Goes through Mirror Temple with Black Pair in the cliff face. Oh, but Black Pair taking himself another death. Okay, TGH with the Death's Corner Boost. Very well done from him now. Black Pair finally wrapping up his Golden Ridge. Mm -hmm. About a 40 second difference. 56.
Oh, TJ's failing on the rhythm on the cassette tape room here and is now struggling with the death cycle. He's taken two deaths on this room. Very uncharacteristic for this chapter. That definitely is going to be a pretty decent opening for Black Pair to be able to take. Yeah, about five to ten seconds lost there, GGH. GGH only a couple screens away from Bub's drop. Yeah, and with the mistakes happening in the late part of 5A, it doesn't necessarily bode well for the 5B. Still gonna be yeah. able to get Blue the Bub drop. drop. But there, you know, it isn't out of the water yet. Like it's still oh, a very difficult Black area to work through. Black Pair reverse wave dash to get the button. in his way to start the seeker section. Oh, but he misses the initial bop down to the coin, having to wait an extra couple of seconds for the seeker to be able to get the coin. Black Pair is through Bub's drop on his first try. That is very good for him. So far, significantly cleaner 5B for Black Pair than what we saw in game one. And this was exactly what he needed. And TGH has still been playing very cleanly in 5B. Only mistakes that have been coming out was Chapter 1 and just a little bit of End of 5A. That is, that is it. And like totaling to maybe 10 seconds. Of, of time loss throughout the whole run. GGH with a 14 minute on the file timer out of 5B. Yeah, just a little bit behind what he had in the first race. Oh! Black Pair missing the Seeker Bop. Gonna get it on the on it flying back, so not a huge deficit. So now Black Pair starts the Theo section, looking to, oh, nobody overshoots Theo when he needed to throw him on the spring. TGH completing link skip, making his way through reflection as Black Pair wraps up the Seeker Gauntlet. Only a couple of more screens left for him in Chapter 5. And now at this point, your choke point, Black Pair seems to have been Celestial Resort, just not able to make it work for a herb. I guess it really wasn't like, well, yeah, Celestial Resort, he lost over 20 seconds to TGH mm -hmm. in that chapter alone. But just the early game in general was where Black Pair really struggled. He, he's played a significant, he played a significantly cleaner 5B in this game than he did in comparison to the first game. Mm -hmm. But Unfortunately, it just didn't really pay off for him. Because you just he just couldn't make the early game work. And that's two deaths on the screen where he overshoots the feather. Oh, 
TGH oh, misses the bumper there. Yes, himself takes a death. Now these runners just make their way through reflection. Looking to be wrapping up their race here and well. Making their way through the second half of the run. TGH coming up onto the dev intended skips. Losing quite a bit of momentum in that little section there. That's one dev skip, two dev skips, and three for TGH. battling boost black bear continuing to make his way through reflection continuing to do what he can to see if maybe he has some hope i'm gonna take a lot to work uh to make it through here still holding around a minute deficit right now a little bit less really but it's it, it feels so much larger, which is where we are in the game. Yeah, there's not much left. There's about 10 minutes left in the run. And so these guys are going to need to... Um, well, Black Bear is going to need to just look for a bunch of mistakes from TGH. See if for some reason something does not work for him. TGH highlighting in his run how in his game one Summit was his weakest chapter. In game one, this one. It's looking like it could be the same because it, it's honestly it's such, he's still playing very consistently. He has it really messed up too much, just a few mistakes here and there resulting in the time that he has. But he really, you know, it just doesn't give the other player any chance to mess up. Yeah, if he gives, where some players can be known to give a mile, TGH barely gives inches sometimes in his mistakes. And again, this is where, like, when you look at TGH, like, the fact that he barely gives inches for players to make mistakes is the reason why he's been a top point of the leagues of GSA for so long. I know that during Season 1, in order to develop his consistency, he did a 50 no reset run challenge. Yeah. Just focusing on consistency, focusing on that. And I remember talking to him at Pace at the end of season one, where he said that just his primary reason for consist is in his mind when it comes to speedrunning, consistency is more important than having that record. And TGH's consistency shows that he's able to have both right now. So now a 1945 for TGH, a 542 reflection. That's a really, really good reflection time for TGH. Yeah, pulling out the another sub 20. As now he is in the summit with Black Pair on the second to last screen of the battle and fight. And if anybody's got an uphill climb at this point to keep themselves alive and to take the title, it's Black Bear. Because TDH, he's now in a, he's put himself in a position where he's just ripe to take it. And 
now TGH is in 500 meters before Black Pair is even starting his summit. Which is a very good position for TGH being almost an entire section ahead of Black Pair in summit. Mm -hmm. As now, through, since chapter three, the ball has been in TGH's court. And he's been proving that when you put the ball in his court, he's able to take it to score. I, I feel like you took that analogy way too far. Like, it, 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 it kind of lost its meaning. Uh, you know, probably, but I, I tried. <laughs> it was worth the shot, and I took it. Okay, the, the shot You're still trying. Oh, was not there. That was unintentional, I swear. <laughs> I swear, taking, it, taking the shot pun was unintentional. It's gonna be a hard one for, to argue about. <laughs> like, uh, you you, you have no ground to stand on right I now. I know, but... Uh, I put myself up for that one. Fine. Hey, don't be judging me on these. Okay. TGH now in 15. Oh, TGH taking another death in this room. Yeah, still having oh, trouble boy. in 1500. That screen surprisingly ca uh, catching him off guard. TGH getting the two ultra dashes. Now he and he's got one more small screen, but now he's in the ultra room. There's one, two ultras, two, three, or four. I had said two twice. I'm a great commentator, guys. Hey, no, you don't have to be good at counting to commentate. <laughs> That's a fair point. Now TTH already wrapping up his 1500 meters. An excellent time for him. He's potentially on a, well, I don't know if this is a 27 pace or not. I don't think so. I'm not very good at, at predicting paces, <laughs> just in general. Because uh, I, I need to see what he gets at, uh, when we get into 3,000 meters, because it's, it's it's just so too much of the run for me to really give a good estimate. TGH working on the auto scroller, skip skip. Owning off. No problems there. An excellent 2000 meters for TGH. Black Pair is entering 2000. All right, now it is time. TGH, are you gonna be able to redeem yourself on that door skip? The most important part. That's this all we cared about throughout this entire where run. it comes down. This is what we were thinking about when we started this. Is he gonna be fine with door skip? If not, that is gonna be really, really interesting. I don't think, like, I, I wouldn't North say too much. Run, missing it two runs in a row would actually be really devastating. Like, not even joking at this point. Like, it actually, it would just be such a blow on his ego. I mean, it would it would definitely humble you a little bit. But you know, when you're in a range situation, anything is possible. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. That's one door. He kind of stumbled <laughs> a little bit there. I'm not gonna lie. He kind of spooked me. But he yeah. is able to do it. TGH redeeming himself, getting that door skip first try in game two. Not the most confident door skip, but still able to pull it off. 
at this point. He's got it. All right, TGH is now entering 3,000 meters. And entering, looking to be wrapping up his race here. Black Pair in 2,500. Oh no, and he dashes himself into the spikes. And gonna re-enter the screen so that he can ha have the momentum going into it. TGH taking a death in downdraft as well. Black Bear able to skip both doors. Very well done from him. Getting that one up on, you know, even though Black Bear is not looking like he's gonna be winning this one he can still say he got both of his door skips in the grand finals <laughs> that's what counts that is what counts it's now tgh entering flag 13 as black pair enters 3000 meters Both of these runners played an excellent, excellent season for themselves. Coming off of win just everything that these guys did, it was very, very well done for both of them throughout this season. Just continuing to be top runners. TGH, you know, looking through in the regular season was able to go first place with 751 points in the regular season. Black Pair being sixth place going in to playoffs, not looking like he was going to have the best shot to make it through in, in playoffs. But then he comes through going up against Marlin, who was expected to potentially take the league as he beat TGH in their match. Marlon was predicted to be in this position right here of mm -hmm. Grand Final. But Black Pair shuts him down and takes the win. And makes his way into the finals. TGH Oh 20, does wait, he get is that twenty tell that, that might be a twenty seven. No. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no way 2800 for TGH at Grand Finals. So close to the 27. No! TGH is heartbroken. Oh, you, you can you see can it. See, you can see the visual not like this come from him. Oh man, so close. But still, TGH. With a 2800 and Point taking out. his second consecutive GSA or second GSA any percent league title, but his third Celeste title from GSA in just showing his dominance as a competitor. And now, two season champions from him. Very, yep. Black Pair now very well out. done from him. Black Pair coming out with a low 29. 29 0 0. So, a full minute difference. GGH giving the thumbs up to that finish. GG's to both of these runners. Very well done. Congratulations to both runners, TGH for now taking the win, and Black Pair for coming in as the runner-up. Yeah, and we it looks like we are going to have players joining us. TGH, how you doing? You there? Hello? Can you hear us? Doesn't look like you can hear us. I don't know if he's muted or not. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. he's got to okay. fix some sound setting. Yeah, a little bit of technical difficulties from TGH. All right. Black Pear just, is going to be passing on the interview. Uh, yeah, we can just look a little bit at what we got here. Like, he played really well. It just breaking through. It just had yeah. just had the mistakes in Mirror Temple and Summit. Mir yeah, Mirror Temple. Well, you know, you compare TGH and Black Pair. The ma majority of Black Pair's mistakes come from Old Site and Celestial Resort. He lost a total of like 40 seconds between those two chapters alone yeah uh tj seems to be saying that he can hear us now so yep yep I can okay okay oh hey he's here so Yo, congratulations on winning the gsa any percent league for season two celeste thank you thanks thank you and feels good and so close to getting a 27 <laughs> i you know what <laughs> Um, I, the, the final cutscene skip took me two tries at the top of the mountain <clears throat> at the flag. Like, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but yeah, the cutscene skip didn't work the first time for some reason. And, um, yeah, that was, that was the 27 right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I, I can now say that I've lost a 27 to door skip. I don't think I could have ever said that before. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> Glad you were able to get yourself that redemption missing it after missing it in game one. <laughs> it was it was way too funny. Honestly, I'm I'm just proud of myself for like not like completely tanking on the way in after that because that was uh that was definitely something I haven't done like in quite a while is field doors. I just forgot to demo dash was the problem. Like I hit the I hit the top and I just completely forgot to like I usually hold my demo button like all throughout um all throughout door skip and I just forgot to hold it for that for some reason. But it is what it is. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, I just find it funny because you're like, I think I'm the only person who has failed door skip. And I'm, like, I'm almost even, certain. We don't I'm almost keep... certain that I'm the only person in the entire season that failed door skip. <laughs> and we don't even keep so... tabs of it on the stat sheet because it's just... <laughs> We just don't think about it, but now apparently we're gonna have to because hey, we of the did one time we did, or we did last season. Last yeah, season, we did last season. Yeah, it, but, yeah, I took it off out of requests from uh, from runners because it's just, and I, I agree because it's, it's just, because it's completely like hundred percent right. It's basically free, yeah. Yeah, because especially because of <laughs> demos. <laughs> it's free, but comes with <laughs> price apparently. <laughs> comes with the price of your own ego. Yes. Yeah, so we don't need to focus on only door skip, as you did have some very good runs. You were able to pull out uh, runs under like under 14 minutes into Summit at one point. Like, you definitely had potential to, in some cases, like, like at some points, it even looked like you could even like, PB in certain areas. Yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely really proud of how I played. Honestly, like all season, um, you know, like it's. It, there's there's something about races for me that I think that brings out like the best in me um, as a player, and I think it's just like the the preparation, um, physical and mental, like just combined with like how I'm able to adjust like throughout the course of a run during a race. I don't know. It's just like I'm I guess I'm more focused. Um, I guess that's what it boils down to. But honestly, like um, it, it's it's all just like I I just. I feel like I tilt way less in races for some reason, like, because I know, like, basically, like, anything can happen in the race, and, like, you know, just depending on, <clears throat> just depending on, you know, well, I, I, I'm kind of going off on a tangent there, but, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit winded, but it's, um, it's fine, I understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's just, like, well it's just easier to focus during races is what i'm trying to say and races definitely too from what it's like when you look at pb attempts in comparison to races like races you one of the most important things is to control your tilt 
and yeah. when you're in a PB attempt, if something goes wrong, you can literally just reset and be fine. Whereas in a race, you don't have that option to reset and just shake it off and just go to the next run. You still have to finish the run. And I think one of the biggest things that separated you you guys in this race was being able to control the tilt. Because I know Black Pair, specifically looking at game one, he had a couple of, he died twice in, at the very end of the fall at the, of the vertical screen in the mirror of 5B. And then after oh. that, his 5B just fell apart. That's the and... worst string to die on, like in the entire chapter, besides for Bob Strout, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just that that death is so tilting. And I, I honestly like, I probably would have done something kind of similar, probably. But um, I mean, there's no telling. But um, I don't know. But like, getting back to the point where you said about like, you can just reset if it's a PB attempt, like, it it's weird because I feel like I feel like because it's a no reset run I'm willing to keep going and not tilt like I think that helps with it um yeah and I think because like I've had I've had so much practice doing like no reset runs in the past that like I just kind of like I've, I've learned pretty well how to handle it and I can I can definitely attribute like my success in the tournament as well as last season and just like honestly my my success in celeste overall to that um to just the fact that i i don't know it's it's just it's just that it's just completely a mental thing and like it's it helps me not tilt and not like get down on myself as i play yeah so uh in a best of three situation like you have in like in celeste how big of like and i know that you did your 50 no reset run challenge in season one but like how big of fatigue do you get doing two no reset runs back to back i feel like i'm used to it at this point like i mean like it's obviously more mentally draining in a tournament setting um or in a race setting overall but uh it, it's definitely like you know I've, I've i've been here before basically um like i've been I've been there both in tournaments and in just like general like I mean in, I feel like on my stream I feel like I've done like 10 10 11 no reset runs in a row like on stream just in the past so like it's it's definitely like it, it's kind of a mental stamina thing and sometimes like the sometimes the stamina gets drained really easily um but doing that kind of helps to to keep it up and you know like make it last longer i guess yeah so another question too because i know you've been grinding a lot of links awakening on stream how much practicing of celeste did you do off stream to prepare yourself for this it's really funny because um like so i i think towards the end of the season and uh and as well as in the playoffs like i mean i wasn't about to to like let my guard down by any means because you know like these guys are all really really good players and like i wasn't you know i was definitely wary of that and you know i didn't i didn't want to let my guard down but um i found that playing less if anything actually helped me a bit um really? because like yeah because here, here's the thing celeste is so like celeste is so hard on your hands um and like, like I'm a controller player, honestly. Like, so I think it, I think it might be a little bit easier on my hands than it would be for a keyboard player. But it's still like, you know, playing for playing for anywhere between five to eight hours a day, every day can like wear on your hands. And but like when I would play, when I would play Link's Awakening, or just like generally take a few days off from the game, I would come back and my hands would feel so fresh. Like I felt like I could do more in the game. It, it's weird. Like I mean, like the game felt foreign to a degree because I hadn't played in a few days, but like my hands felt awesome. And I think those two factors just kind of offset each other and like it never really uh it never really like affected my times that much at the tournament, I would say. So like time off is definitely a good thing, can definitely be a good thing for somebody who plays a lot, like myself. Okay. So now that you've taken your victory here, uh, what is your plan for the off season? Just continuing with Link's Awakening, or do you have something else in the in the books? 
I'm definitely gonna keep playing both games, uh, both Celeste and Link and Link's Awakening. But uh, but I think uh, like speaking strictly about Celeste, like. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from speedrunning, like like serious speedrunning for like a good long while, um, probably until next season if there is a next season for Celeste, um, for for GSA. But um, but yeah, like honestly, like I feel like I've done kind of all I want to do with the game speedrunning wise personally, and like it's time to move on from speedrunning. But I don't want to stop playing the game, <laughs> so okay. like I yeah. I definitely want to uh, like. I'm like I'm thinking about doing like like challenge runs kind of. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. Like I got I got the the chapter 9 golden berry on stream the other night um or the other morning, whatever. I don't know what day it is anymore. Um <laughs> but uh your sleep but, schedule I don't blame you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like well you call it that. I don't call it that, but whatever. Um sleep schedule. Uh but yeah, it's just like stuff like that. Like just finding ways to challenge myself. Um and just keep myself entertained with the game because this game is way too good. Like I don't, I don't want to stop playing it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see. And of course, there's Link's Awakening as well. And I've been having fun speedrunning that game too. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what the future holds for sure. But um, for now, that's my tentative plan. All right. All right. So do you have any closing thoughts you want to give? Um, to say to say to Black Pair, the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Like GG's Black Pair. Seriously, like you know, it's it's been it's been really great to see the improvement of a select few um, runners. Actually, like honestly, most of the runners in uh, like in this season have shown just like awesome improvement throughout the entire season, and Black Pair certainly is one of the ones who's shown the most um, improvement both this season and last season as well. Uh, just like super super good player. Um, you know super good mindset overall and just like that's that's how you improve um but yeah seriously gg's black pair was a pleasure racing um shout outs to uh global speedrun association for hosting this tournament uh once again um really hoping to make it out to to pace 2020 if i can i feel bad i can't get i can't get out to gsa legends but um but yeah it, it just it's just not the cards for me and i feel bad about it but i i really want to be at pace 2020 um so looking forward to that. Shout outs to the the viewers. Um, shout outs to the Celeste community. Shout outs to my community. Um, and just like thanks, thanks for making this such a good time. All right, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, so with that, that is going to conclude the Celeste Any Percent League for season two. Um, Troy, do you have any final words to say to our viewers? I'll say uh, not quite the end because right because uh, we do still have the bronze match. Oh, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Thank you for fixing that for me. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as we you know as soon as we finish up here and say goodbye to you, we'll just have a quick break as we go right into the bronze match between Chai Kitty and Aurora Dash. So, so yeah, we're gonna toss it over intermission again. Congratulations to you, TGH, on your back-to-back -back Celeste titles. Uh, again, GG's to you, Black Pair, as well for making it this far and pulling the upsets that you needed that you needed to make it to this point. Absolutely insane seeing the improvement from every single runner. Shoutouts to all the runners in the community. Um, and so yeah, with that, that's gonna conclude it here for us here at the Grand Finals. And we will see you guys in just a couple of minutes for the bronze match between Chai Kitty and Aurora Dash. Yeah, also I forgot to say shout outs to the comms. Shout outs to the um the commentators. Uh Zodulix, um, Troy of Athens, Programmatic, Dave Stereo, FC Racers, everybody who commentated. You guys all did a great job as well. Uh, and thank you guys for taking time out of your days to do it. I love doing it. Oh. <laughs> I, I thanks. Uh, so, yeah, let's get ready for that bronze match, everybody. <laughs>